Hey there YouTubers, welcome back to another Tesla electric car video with me, Adam Well Informed. Well, this week's video completely caught me by surprise. I've owned my Tesla Model 3 SR Plus for 21 months and my Fremont made 2021 Tesla Model 3 was the slowest and lowest range Tesla Model 3 you could buy at the time and ultimately this would be a sole family car. As the sole family car, you do not want to be held back by the electric vehicle's range, right? And ultimately, you want to use the vehicle's full utility and the practicality that it has to offer. In 2022, now the kids have gotten a little bit older and grown a lot, and with new electric vehicles hitting the market, well, pretty much more so than in 2020, does my 2021 Tesla Model 3 still hold its own against these new incoming vehicles? Does it still cope with my family requirements today? Plus, does the novelty of owning a Tesla wear off and does that then convince you to look elsewhere? At 21 months ownership, I would like to think that this will give you a great representation of how my Tesla Model 3 is holding up. Hopefully, it serves existing owners a good reference point of any issues that I've faced today or if you're about to purchase a used Tesla, this could be a great insight into what owning an almost two year old Tesla Model 3 can be like. So if you are interested to hear about my Tesla Model 3 review at 21 months, you come to the right place. In the meantime, I'd appreciate it if you give the video a cheeky like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you're interested in Tesla and EV content weekly, hit the notification bell so you're going to be the first to know when a video goes live. So Adam, what cheeky content have you got in store for us today? So I think before we head into the family practicality side and consider the question of boredom and potential upgrades, let's just stop and evaluate the condition of my Tesla Model 3 at 24 months, as I know some of you will be interested in this the most. All of these shots are of my own Tesla Model 3 and it's not been wrapped and by wrapped I mean not PPF film. If you thought I said whacked, yes, unfortunately it has been whacked a couple of times through no fault of my own. Thankfully, nothing too serious, just some paintwork damage, but otherwise, if I'm being brutally, brutally honest and true to myself, there are two elements to this upcoming statement about the condition that it's in. The first being, I think my paintwork is in a pretty good and reasonable shape. Yeah, it does have some stone chips here and there, but nothing out of the ordinary to any of a car at 21 months old. I don't feel like I'm hard done by in any way. The paintwork back when I purchased my Tesla Model 3 in late 2020 was one of the items to look out for during your pre-collection checking. Since then, I've seen some unfortunate cases over YouTube, but hands down from my experience at least, it's very much in line with my expectations and my experience of owning other cars. I think what I like most about the paintwork, and this isn't a new statement for myself, but it is my second statement about the paintwork, I still feel that the pearl white is one of the most rewarding colours that you can own. Say what you want about the pearl white multi-coat, but day-to-day -day use, it still looks white, unless you enjoy being a dirty bugger, and I mean we've all been there at times however, discounting that, once that dirt has been removed via a cheeky hand wash, and I do have a brand new video for you on that over the next couple of weeks, but after a bit of elbow work and the pearl will then really come through in the paintwork. And I think if you're using the right products, the car almost feels like it's new all over again. Plus the pearl white is a completely free color option. And that means that any light scratches then blend into the white paintwork, which works out quite nicely. That said, pearl white multi-coat is extremely popular because Ultimately, it is free. And then a point that I am unfortunately too familiar with is that any repair paint job is slightly more difficult just because they have to layer the white paint and then the pearl coat on top. And so matching that to the existing paintwork can stretch the ability of the repairer themselves. But beyond paint, I've also replaced the aero wheel covers with these awesome matte black trims. And if you wanna see the installation process, etc., check out the video above or in the description below. However, I have an exciting sequel to that video that I plan to release over the next couple of weeks, so do keep an eye out for that. But having paid for these covers, I really do love owning these covers because A, it hides the hideous curb rash, and B, the contrast to the white gives me Model 3 performance vibes, but it still maintains that SR Plus-like appearance, yet gives my Tesla Model 3 a bit of unique character, especially if we're rocking the popular white paint job. Anyhow, it's now time to move on to practicalities for what I'm calling the family performance. And by that, 
is my Tesla Model 3 of almost two years old holding me back in any way as the sole family car, as I mentioned before. Therefore, does the Circa real world range of 240 miles then hold me back? And does the charging network have any cause for hindrance? Me and the wife drive between eight to 10,000 miles a year between us, which is well within the annual average mileage by the average driver. Day to day, that's around 30 miles a day or so. You're not even scratching the surface of the range that's on offer. Therefore, to most people, it's way more than capable of your day-to-day -day errands that you'd expect. But what happens on that odd occasion that you do need to jump through a number of cities or that family road trip, Adam? Well, I just did a 370 mile all-round road trip, literally just last month. And spoiler alert, the music to my ears was this trip was not only quicker than the same trip that I did the previous year, but it was also easier and actually more efficient. That's primarily because the charging network is growing month on month. So for any depreciating range you may suffer for which I believe is negligible when I last checked it from 12 months, it does not hold you back. The more charging stops available en route, the more relaxed you can be because the car's navigation can literally predict the best place to stop for the quickest outcome and that may just be a 10 to 15 minute stop after two three hours depending on your route but for a family road trip it's easy to fit around a service stop kids get hungry despite you throwing every snack available to them in a car and wives and husbands for that matter get cranky for coffee so to date it doesn't feel like a chore to charge it's not as if you're standing out in a freezing cold holding the cable and hand pumping them electrons into it you're safe to leave the cable securely fastened and you get a smartphone notification for when it's done. So supercharging is really as convenient as you want it to be. But if I'm honest, I rarely ever need to supercharge and that's because I charge from home every other night. So considering a vast majority of these months are 100% home charging, these are some of my home charging costs. So on average, it's around 13 pounds for a whole month. That's like just over 11 bucks for my American friends. But part of that reason is down to the Octopus Go tariff that I'm on. And that allows me to charge overnight for a cheaper price. And I'll leave a link in the description if you wanted to find out more about that tariff. And I'll also leave a referral code if you decide to proceed. But still, £13 for personal mobility for the whole family for the whole month. Electrification has completely transformed my personal mobility costs in comparison to my old petrol car. For reference, that off-peak tariff cost in my local area is around 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour as of today. So despite the current pricing pressures, tariffs like this still exist and EV drivers can take full advantage of that. The final part to the family performance section is just the practical space and the main media screen. So I have two kids and so I have two car seats and they operate just fine. But let's be honest, the kids don't necessarily treat it with the same level of respect that I'd like them to. Ultimately, they're just kids. However, the seats are thankfully easy to wipe down and they love standing or moving to the middle seat to watch the main screen display when we decide to stay in the car. And that's generally when their mother decides to run into the next store or another shop for a similar important errand and you partners know exactly what I'm on about, right? Anyhow, the Tesla software and the level of entertainment has only gotten better over the 21 months of my ownership. Only a few months ago, they introduced Disney Plus, for example, for which my son hugely appreciated how he can now watch Toy Story and the new Buzz Lightyear film and any other great Pixar film that you know he wants to watch. And on the other hand, my daughter would much prefer that I gave her YouTube, just not one of her daddy's Tesla videos. Let's not go there. It's not just the entertainment software that has evolved, so has the user interface. One of the latest additions was the inclusion of the side repeater cameras when indicating, and I find this particularly useful for when I'm on the motorway and the wife suddenly decides to obscure that mirror, so it offers a good second reference point. And I know the latest software actually now allows you to move this feed around the screen real estate. However, that update is yet to reach me. But this leads me on to my final point before the conclusion. Does owning a Tesla get boring? The quick answer is no, owning a Tesla does not get boring. In fact, I'd go one step further and say it's a different car ownership experience altogether. If you're the type of person that gets bored driving the same car for around a year or two, I think you'd be happier owning a Tesla, primarily down to the software upgrades alone that alter not only the entertainment package, but driving experience as a whole. And let's not forget the latest update that made my Tesla safer for my family overnight. 
the vehicle now uses the cameras to initiate the belt tension just before a crash. So instead of being reactive, the safety system is now proactive. That update might not necessarily be sexy, but it damn right makes my family trips safer than ever before. What other manufacturer pushes that kind of update straight to your car? That said, owning a Tesla is an experience that equally blesses you and curses you at the same time because once you experience it, it then becomes pretty hard to truly appreciate another vehicle like for like. You still like other cars and different brands, but just considering if it could replace your own Tesla, as a package for myself, I just really struggle to see myself looking outside of the Tesla brand or Tesla bubble, at least in the short term. I'm not alone in that statement as Tesla has an incredible retention rate because the experience is on a whole new level in particular compared to a nice vehicle. And whilst that may sound incredibly fanboyish, go on a test drive in a Tesla and you will understand how the vehicle is fun to drive. Plus you'll also see that first hand sheer convenience that it has to offer thanks to its software integration. Honestly, if you went in there with no expectations, I think it would blow your mind. If you're an existing Tesla owner, you know, you probably remember your first time, right? We all remember our first time. I should probably say, if you're not in the market for a new car and you do test drive that Tesla, I'm not taking any responsibility for your next actions. You've been warned. But seriously, I've talked before about potentially upgrading to a Tesla Model Y, and now we have this new Model Y rear-wheel drive that's even cheaper than ever before. How do I feel and owning almost a two-year-old Model 3? So to conclude, after 21 months of owning a Tesla, am I bored of it? And do I want to upgrade to that latest Model Y rear-wheel drive anytime soon? And the truth is, whilst it is incredibly tempting, the short answer is that whilst it would give me a number of hardware upgrades, some that I would greatly appreciate, the reality is that our Tesla Model 3 SR Plus has nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's still just as cheap to run and it caters for all of our needs today, just like it did on its very first day. In the meantime, the software upgrades give the car that fresh new feeling from time to time. And I think this is a primary driver as to why the temptation to swap and change is not really there. That element of boredom from owning a car for so many months is not the same as it once was because the updates keep it fresh enough that the vehicle performance, the entertainment, or just the general driving convenience can change overnight all through a number of coding changes, pushed through from over the air updates. If you had an ICE car to get these features, that would probably require a visit to a garage, then it may even require a hardware swap at a cost to you. So car ownership is changing and the Tesla Model 3 that I own today is even better than it was back when I first picked it up 21 months ago. And the crazier thing is, is that it will be even better in three months to six months to 12 months time all thanks to these software updates. Now, if you haven't done so already, please let me know what your thoughts are on my Tesla Model 3 review. Tesla owners, do you feel the temptation to upgrade is less so than before when you used to own an ICE car? And to non-Tesla owners, you know, what really does put you off from owning a Tesla Model 3 the most? Alternatively, if you're not sure what to comment and you want to let me know you've got this far in the video, you can simply comment my first time and I'll give you a cheeky thumbs up for doing so. As I told you before, I really do enjoy coming up with these phrases. Anyhow, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share it with anyone or a beneficial group that may find this video useful. You folks have been great as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.